So we're going to be looking at um, different types of tenant breach of covenants. And, we, and I've divided them up because I think from many landlords' perspectives, the thing that's most important to most landlords, and particularly in a differ, difficult economic um, market as we are in today's world, what's most important for most landlords is the rental um, income. They want to ensure that their income stream remains on tap, and so looking at the tenant's failure to pay rent, the breach of the rental obligation covenant, is going to be the most important thing for many landlords. So we're going to start there by looking at breach of the rent covenant. And we'll be looking at what the landlord can actually do faced with such a breach, looking at pulling down on the rent deposit, commercial rent arrears recovery, pursuing a subtenant, statutory demands, arrears proceedings, and possibly forfeiture. And we'll also be looking at third parties in terms of guarantors. And then we'll move on and look at breach of other covenants um, and what kind of remedies there are, what kind of restrictions on those remedies have uh, come about, uh, largely through um, court decisions. So restrictions and difficulties that actually in practice give rise to restrictions um, on remedies. And we'll be looking at some self-help remedies as well. And and also why those may not be as helpful as self-help remedies sound as if they're going to be. And at the very end of today's session, we'll have um, a quick whiz through the impact of different types of insolvency on the landlord's ability to use any of these remedies if the tenant moves into some form of insolvency. So prerequisites. Well, when it comes to um, rent, in order to ensure you get forfeiture right, you need one there to be a forfeiture clause or a re-entry clause um, predicated on the basis of tenant's breach. So sometimes it's called forfeiture, sometimes it's called re-entry, and you need to have triggered that clause. So in the case of rent, you need to have rent arrears that have fallen due, and normally you'll have days of grace as well, at which point, if rent hasn't been paid within 21 days, often of the quarter day, then the right to forfeit opens up to you. Um, you may have to serve a notice. You may have to serve a rent demand. That depends very much on what the lease says. Generally speaking, you don't need to have served a rent demand because the lease will normally tell you you don't have to as a prerequisite for forfeiture. But if it doesn't, you might want to think about serving a rent demand and any other notices. So if you're recovering rents that are actually service charged, there may be notices that have to be served. 